I'm James Reeves. Most probably all of you know me from my work on TFP TV, a gun channel on YouTube. Of course, YouTube, very diverse place. And by diverse, I mean a good mix of underage children, chatbots, people with severe cognitive disabilities who are all YouTube commenters. They leave YouTube comments on your YouTube videos in the comments section below, which is an area I believe was originally designed for insightful opinions and constructive criticism, but instead is used for OnlyFans bait posting gibberish gun opinions from people who are legally not allowed to own firearms and the N-word. I'm doing this video in no particular order because it's really hard to say what the most annoying comment is that I get, but one that really does just grind my balls is when people freak out when you say silencer instead of suppressor. The logic behind the comment, if there is any, is that silencers don't truly make a gun silent. They just suppress the noise. Well, I wish I could suppress your face. Not only is this overly pedantic, but technically wrong. The guy who literally fucking invented the silencer called it a silencer. That should shut down argument, but never, ever, ever, ever in the history of YouTube comments has someone said, you know what, man, that's a really good point, and left it at that. Instead, they double down. They explain that it's a more politically correct way to say silencer. If you say suppressor, anti-gun people won't think that a gun can be really silent. This to me sounds like pure cope. I guarantee you, anti-gun people aren't watching my videos. And if they did, their appreciation of how silencers work has already been informed by mainstream media, not by me calling them silencers. If I'm going to persuade the literally zero moms demanding action that watch my content that silencers don't truly mute a gunshot, it's going to be because they actually see me shooting one on camera, not because I called it a suppressor instead of a silencer. Speaking of that, I know that these moms will really demand some action when they see me on the range in the five inch inseams, if you know what I'm saying, and I think you do. Sticking with the pedantics and semantics, another one I love is when people confuse assault rifle and assault weapon. Totally agree with you. Assault weapon, politicized term. It was concocted by pro-gun control spokespeople and politicians probably in the 80s or 90s. Meaningless. On the other hand, an assault rifle is literally a term of art and it refers to a select fire rifle that uses an intermediate cartridge and a detachable magazine. Just like battle rifle. We're talking about a specific type of rifle. It originated during World War II with the invention of the Sturmgewehr by most accounts. When you complain about using the term assault rifle, it just shows that everything you learned about guns was from Reddit or AR15.com. Assault rifle, assault weapon, not the same thing. Another one of my favorite comments is about cell phones. Specifically, a lot of commenters like to say that this gun brand or this model of gun, it's like the iPhone of the gun world. And that's, that's meant to be an insult. So you're telling me that comparing a gun to one of the most successful and revolutionary products of all time is a bad thing. Trying to understand why some commenters say some things is a little bit like trying to understand how my pet goat Beavis used to get his head caught in the fence almost every day. It's just hard for me to comprehend. So I turned the camera off. I just huffed a bunch of gasoline to try to understand the argument here. I think the insult means that when a company keeps releasing a similar pistol or the same model without revolutionary upgrades, it's a bad thing. I know that this is, again, most commonly used to refer to Glock. I think some people say the same thing about SIG, maybe Daniel Defense. I, I don't know. I, it's a dumb insult and kind of a weak comparison. The AK-47, almost 80 years old, racking up a body count higher than your mom's on a daily basis with only a few changes to the core concept over almost a century. Now, the Gen 3 Glock, invented in 1999, it's now being ripped off by every single manufacturer in the year 2024 because the patent expired. So in other words, a 25-year-old piece of technology for one company that incrementally improves it, it's the iPhone of guns, but PSA does it, and they copy a version that's like 25 years old. It's the best thing ever. And even if that's true, is that a bad thing? A little bit like the iPhone, companies like Glock and Sig did such a good job the first time around that they'd be dumb to just radically overhaul their guns every few years. People want the same shit, but they don't want the same shit, if that makes sense. 
they want all the things that they love about the original. They want the reliability and holster compatibility. They just want an update every now and then, I suppose. I'll just never get the iPhones of guns as an insult. If I were a manufacturer who had a gun, like a hit gun, then I would maybe stick with it and maybe incrementally improve it five times over the past 40 years. I don't know. Obviously, I'm referring to the Glock, and you guys know I'm a Glock fanboy, so maybe I'm being a little bit defensive, but there's a reason why it's probably the most popular handgun of all time. Now, this one might be the worst one. The guys who second guess, the guest instructors, these illustrious guest instructors that we have in the program. We could have the butt baby of Jack Reacher and John Wick on this program, and someone would find a way to hit him with the, well, actually, you should never press check from the front of the slide. It's frankly f***ing embarrassing. But if you want one of the worst specific examples like that I'm thinking of right now from recent history, I had Jimmy Cannon on the program. I trained with Jimmy in Austria. He's one of the best instructors I know. This guy's a fucking Green Beret. And we've got no guns incels in the comments to that video who are upset because possibly one of the most dangerous men in the world says it's a good idea to look at your handgun as you reholster it. Boom, shot goes off. I'm going to trigger reset. And as I bring it back home, uh, trigger finger comes out of the trigger well, look down at the holster and put it back. That's the takeaway for some people from this video who are getting knowledge from this experienced spec ops operator. How could this guy say that I should look at my gun when I reholster it? What if there's still a threat? Shouldn't I be scanning? Here's an idea. If you feel like there's maybe still a threat, how about don't holster your gun until you're sure that there isn't? Well, how can I be sure? What if I don't know that there's a threat? I mean, you can't be sure that there's not a threat right now sitting at your computer at home. So I hope you've got your Taurus G2 and your Frito smelling dick beaters right now. I've been lucky enough, I don't deserve it, but I've been lucky enough to train with some of the best trainers in the world over the years. Bill Rapier, Clint Smith, Bill Blowers, Jack Daniel, Taryn Butler, whoever. Not one time, not one time ever has any of them said, you know what, man, it's a really good idea to not look at your gun when you reholster it. But let me tell you now why it's a bad idea. I hope some of you are aware that one of the causes of negligent discharges when reholstering is when you grab a piece of shirt or drawstring or jacket, one of those jacket toggles, and it goes into the trigger guard with the gun. You shove it back in the holster, bang. You could also bumble the gun and drop it, which freaks everyone out. I've seen this happen before, especially there was one time a dude had a brand new 226 with an optic, broke his brand new optic, put a big scratch on his gun as a result. There are a lot of guys like me who also like to carry and train with inside the waistband holsters under a shirt. And I'd say that it would probably be pretty dangerous to attempt to reholster without looking the gun back in. Anyways, this one drives me absolutely nuts just because I, I hate seeing bad advice in the comments, but it's also really embarrassing for me when I have a talented instructor on the program He's looking through the comments to his video and he sees dumb shit like this from my viewers, which you guys, the comments you leave, I think it says something about me as well. Now the last one, and I know I've talked about this before, making fun of dudes' accents. So we increase uh, the level of uh, to release the magazine and they'll open. This is one of the few, 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 very few things that will get you banned from our mostly toxic comment section. I love our raw comment section. You guys have made me a better presenter. I think I'm still not that good, but you've made me better because of how honest you are and how brutal you are. And also, I think that you give valuable input to manufacturers. I get phone calls. I've had people ask me to take videos down because of shit you guys have said in the comments. I hang up the phone. I'm like, well, you know, it made sense. Like you guys were really dumb to do this thing this way. So a lot of your input really is valuable, but this one just irks me. And again, I don't like banning people. I rarely do it, but this will do it. You have to understand, native English speakers are already nervous enough appearing on camera. I'm nervous right now. Now imagine that not only are you on camera, but now you're talking on camera to an English-speaking audience, and English is your second or third language. You have no idea how many of these guys say to me before the camera starts rolling. So I came in, James, English, it's not really my strong suit. I'm kind of nervous about this, and I tell them, no problem. And what I mean is no problem because I'm going to ban the shit out of any of these cuck lords who are going to ridicule you, you sweet, sweet old European engineer man. But James, shouldn't these people be hiring someone who speaks English as a first language to handle this? I'm hoping none of you are actually saying it because it's ridiculous. 
on a number of levels, just touching a couple of reasons. When I go to shows like E1 Germany, I'm the foreigner. We're the foreigners, guys. They're doing us a favor in speaking English to us. Second, if I have the choice to speak to a native English speaker or to talk to the engineer who speaks English as a second language, I'm doing us all a kindness by talking to the man who invented the goddamn gun. Otherwise, what happens, we end up with this shit from SHOT Show where you talk to some career marketer. On this one right here, they're using ho grips front and rear, nice and comfortable for that quick punch with a nice pump action. Who's got no idea really what the product is, maybe goes out in the range once a year, but he can sure use the marketing lingo. What that is for is, again, the breacher. You notice we've got the holes up in here for those gases to escape when we're getting down inside the door frame to blow that frame out. And sound like a used car salesman. You talk to me, give me a little love, give me a little love with a nice pump action. When we're getting down inside the door frame to blow that frame out. Pump action. You talk to me, give me a little love. With a nice pump action. Pump action. Nice and comfortable pump action. When we're getting down inside the door frame. Give me a little love. It's vapid, it's worthless, it's not what we want, but it's what you're going to get if you guys keep picking on my ESL boys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching content on this, my personal channel. These are definitely not the five best or worst. They're just the five I can kind of think of right now. If this video ends up going over well, I will round up another set, send it your way. In the meantime, please subscribe. Again, this is my personal channel, James Reeves, not TFB TV. We're trying to divide up the content a little bit. So again, Thank you, and look out for those hooker bots in the comment section. Take care, everyone. Bye.